Chapter 8 Into the Barren Lands Sylvania, Winter, 2010 Stephen Fisher ran for his life. He staggered and stumbled and forced himself to run on. Hunger ate away at him. Some days he was lucky and fished on dyed meat of a giant rat or long-nosed tapir. Other days he subsided on roots from plants. There were no fruits or berries. On the worst days he went hungry. After three weeks of running, the snows came. At first gentle, they didn't settle, but as the climate continued to drop, the snow stopped smelting as it fell. Winter arrived. It would be the death of him if he didn't find warmth and shelter soon. A few roots and bugs weren't going to be enough to keep him alive. And that was what it all came down to, staying alive. He stumbled on into the boggy marshland west of Darkmoor, the specter of Van Haldenschlosse, black in the distance like the ghostly claws of a revenant shade. Insects and mosquitoes swarmed all over him day and night, biting and sucking at his blood. For every one he slapped away or killed, ten more swarmed in to take its place, feeding on his fresh meat. The only respite he got from the blood-sucking insects was at night, if he managed to gather the fixings to make a fire. The smoke drove them away. By cover of night, he stole a coracle from a small settlement on the outskirts of the marsh, and for the last three days had been poling the small boat slowly through the reeds and rushes. He had eaten nothing in two days. Hunger left him dizzy and delirious. In his delirium, he remembered snatches of, of Geheimnisnacht, the masquerade, the beautiful people in their bone masks, and the slaughter that followed. There was a nightmarish quality to it, but that was no surprise. Every minute of every day since Geheimnisnacht had been part of one long unending nightmare. His only thought now was that he had to escape Sylvania. He had to make it back to the Empire so that he might warn people of von Karstein's true nature. Not that he expected anyone to believe him. The dead rising from their graves, the Count and his cohorts gathering an army of the dam to their side. Who in their right mind would believe him? It was hard enough for him to believe, and he had lived through it. It was still fresh in his mind, and it always would be. The images of death and destruction had seared themselves into his mind's eye. Fisher stumbled down the narrow stairs, his heart hammering in his chest. Skellen was dead. That, that thing, had thrown his corpse over the gallery rail. The Tottentons was a trap, and Skellen's death acted as the spring that sent the jaws slamming down. He staggered out of the stairwell. A woman still clutching her bone mask stumbled into his arms. Her throat had been torn out. The blood and the gore spilled out from the open wound, down the front of her dress. She died in his arms, her lifeblood oozing out all over him. The great hall was in chaos, people screaming, running, dying. The vampires descended in a feeding frenzy. Flight was impossible. Everyone who ran for one of the exits from the great hall was chased down and slaughtered by one of von Karstein's vampires. He was going to die here, in this foreign place, unmourned, food for one of the damned. He staggered forward. The woman's dead weight dragged her from his hands. People were dying all around him. There was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Something slammed into his back, propelling him off his feet. Fisher sprawled forward, arms outstretched to break his fall, and landed in a bloody pool of spilled viscera. The blood was still warm on his hands and face. The screams were unbearable. He slipped and slithered through the gore, pulling a dead man across his body and lay there under the gutted corpse, staring blankly up towards the ceiling and praying fervently that the vampires would miss him. It was almost impossible not to gag on the wretched stench of death. He wanted desperately to breathe, but couldn't. Not more than a sip of corrupt air at a time. It was all he could do not to cry out in revulsion. Tatters of flesh were stripped and thrown around the death room. Blood sprayed over everything. The feeding frenzy went on unabated, the vampires playing with the last few revelers, spinning them from vampire to vampire, cutting them and pushing them away until they tired of the game and hit their victims' throats and drained every last ounce of blood before they discarded the corpse. The vampires moved through the room, pulling trinkets and jewelry from the corpses and arguing over the spoils, 
after von Karstein disappeared upstairs. He was lucky. They weren't looking for survivors. They were sated from the feeding and interested in gold and jewels. He had neither on him, so he was left alone. The silence was unnerving, but it did not last long. Long minutes later, it was still replaced by cracks of thunder and the sound of rain lashing at the windows as the storm raged outside. Still, Fisher didn't move. Even as around him, the nightmarish scene of slaughter became a macabre resurrection. One after another, the gutted, slashed, and gored partygoers rose awkwardly, answering some unheard call. In the midst of it all, he saw Skellen rise, his hands going to the wound on his neck, where Herman Posner had bitten him. Mimicking the dead, Fisher pushed himself jerkily to his feet. He wanted desperately to go to his friend. For a moment, he thought that it was really was John Skellen there, that somehow he had survived the slaughter, where the others shambled about the great hall like mindless zombies. Skellen appeared to be thinking, remembering what had happened. Then he screamed, and his scream was far from human. It was the last trace of humanity fleeing from his vampiric form. Silent tears slid down Fisher's cheeks as he said the final goodbye to his friend. With the milling corpses bumping into each other as they struggled to retain control of their awkward limbs, Fisher slipped behind one of the velvet curtains, moving slowly like one of the lost souls he had just abandoned. No one followed him as he snuck into the kitchens and then down again into the cellars. And then he was out into the fresh air, the rain soaking him and washing the blood from his face as he staggered about in the darkness looking for a way out. He stole a black stallion from the Count's stables and rode it into the ground. The horse died beneath him. He cut the dead animal open, filleting a few cuts of meat from it, which he stuffed into his pockets, and then he ran. The resurrections were not contained to the revelers either. In the six weeks he had been running, Fisher had come across pockets of shambling undead, recently raised from the gardens of Moor, and mausoleums across the countryside, the dirt of the graves still clinging to their rotten flesh, all moving unerringly in the direction of Drakenhof Castle. They were answering von Karstein's call. The vampire count was drawing the dead to him, summoning them from the grave to his side, more and more bodies, almost as though he were raising an army, a monstrous undead regiment. But why? And then it came to him. Von Karstein could only have a single purpose for raising an undead army, to wage war on the Empire. Fisher pushed the pole deep into the saturated ground, propelling the coracle deeper into the marsh. He had to survive. He had to warn people what monsters were coming their way. Without his warning, town after town would succumb to the same bloody slaughter that he had lived through on Geheimnisnacht. He couldn't, wouldn't, allow that to happen. He had to survive. 